and another. Torah is about making balance. shalom. All of the pathways of Torah are balance, and that is what the Beit Hamikdash is going to be: perfect balance. And that's why it's all these concentric squares. A square expresses perfect balance. There's two sides, there's a top and the bottom, and they're all completely equidistant. Nobody has more space, more influence. The opposites are held in perfect balance, and that is the expression of Oseh Shalom bin Rome of Huyaseh Shalom. It is God's ability to bring together the opposites and hold them in a dynamic and creative balance that does not lead to one of them knocking out the other, but both of them in zibug and in chibul working together to produce creation that is embodied in the whole form of the temple. That is what the squares and the cubes are all expressing this balance. In fact, Ramchal explains a very interesting part of Ezekiel's prophecy, which tells us that on the festivals when Israel will pass through the temple, <coughs> we know in the uh, Gemara Brachas it says you may not make the uh, Harabais Kapandaria, you're not allowed to, uh, if you want to get from one side of Jerusalem to the other, you're not allowed to take a short cut over Harabais. You, uh, you can't just walk through. And yet the interesting thing is that in Yechezkel he says that on the festivals, those who come in will, in the north gate will go out through the south gate, those who come in in the south gate will go out through the north gate. So what does all this mean? Ramchal explains to us, uh, you know that uh, north is Gibura and south is uh, Chesed. And the whole point of the Beis Amit is to join Chesed and Gibura together. That's why if you came in through the side of Gibura, you've got to go out through the side of Chesed. If you came into the side of Chesed, you've got to go out to the side of Gevurah to join the different Midois together to make them work interactively, productively, in harmony instead of this uh, crazy uh, Kalippa uh, excess that, that, that uh, I win, you have to lose. The temple is, everybody wins. All the sides are held in perfect balance. So having said that, I'd like to move on before I invite your comments and questions to the avoider of the Beit HaMikdosh. But as I said earlier, how, now that we've learned from Ramchal that the temple is the point where all the branches meet and get energized from the roots, it is in the avoider of the temple that this actually happens. And here we have to confront another highly politically incorrect subject, which is the subject of the animal sacrifices. <clears throat> There's no doubt in the Gemara and the Midrashim that the sacrifices are going to be reinstituted. There is a question about whether the private sacrifices of Khatos and Asham will be reinstituted, but the Chachomimar agreed that the public sacrifices of the Korban Tamid on uh, the morning and the afternoon, the Shabbos, the Rosh Chodesh, and the festival sacrifices will all be reinstituted. The only, the Chazal said that in the future there will only be the Torah Thanksgiving offering. That does not mean that all other Chathos, Oila, Oshem will be suspended. What it means is that the individual Torah offering, the individual Thanksgiving offering will be the only one that is left because people will already be weaned away from a situation of sin and transgression that would require them to bring an Oshem or a Chathos or an Oila. So only the Torah will remain. But it's clear from Yechezkel that all of the public sacrifices of the whole Tzibur, the whole of Am Yisrael, will continue. And we know that even though there are discrepancies between, uh, between Yechezkel, according to the Pshat, and the Chumash, in the place where the Chumash speaks about the uh, Korbanas, all of these were ironed out in the time of, of uh, the students of Hillel and Shammai, when one of the Chachomim sat in an attic uh, with 300 barrels of oil and uh, learning all the, uh, the chapters of Yechezkel and reconciling everything so that uh, we see that in fact there are no discrepancies where there's an apparent discrepancy is because Yechezkel is talking about one of the sacrifices which will be a Chat Pa'ami, a one-time sacrifice for the inauguration of the future temple just like there were in the inauguration of the uh, Mishkan and the wilderness and the first and second temples. 
so the sacrifices are an integral part of the temple service and the sacrifices do indeed bring all of creation together we have the Kohen who is on the side of Chesed who is the only one who is allowed to engage in the sacrifice actual Shechita is permitted by a non-Kohen but from receiving the blood of the animal until the end of the, uh, the service with the animal sprinkling the blood and the uh, burning of the portions and the uh, pouring of the libations that may only be done by a Kohen because only the man of Chesed has the power to complete the aliyot, the elevations that are required to take place in the temple service everything has to go up a level in order to the, that branch of creation which is represented by that thing that is on the altar will get its, its aliyah, it will get its shefa so we see on the altar in the temple all levels of creation involved the Kohen is performing the sacrifice the levy on the side of Gevura is using the force of Gevura of song to elevate the whole sacrifice the Yisrael is actually the owner of the sacrifice, he has to be there, he has representatives we have the Anshe Ma'amad who are standing in the courtyard while this is happening instead of devotion they're not chatting to one another like uh, God forbid people do in shul they're mamash, uh, aligning their thoughts to the Korbanus and what is happening and then we have the animal we have the vegetable, we have the wine of the libation, we have the wheat and we have the olive oil which is on the wheat and then we have the inanimate represented in the salt you remember the uh, midrash about the salt when the creation was made and God divided the waters the upper waters and the lower waters and the lower waters are crying out uh, look how far away we are uh, from you HaKadosh Baruch Hu. and he says don't worry the salt which is in the sea will come up on my Mizbeach and this way every part of creation is represented in the temple sacrifices and they're all offered on the altar so thus it is that all of the branches of creation the inanimate mineral world the vegetable world the animal world they all have their representatives in the avoider and for information on the Keteris altar inside the Hechal, which I said earlier is the place of the Shefa of the Mishamas of Am Yisrael, that is where our souls are offered on that altar. The Keteris is the very highest of the offerings, and uh, if I can say a word, there's no greater protection no greater security than the daily recital of the Pitomak uh, Teiras the Zara College mentions this in Parshish Pukude the uh, protective power of the recital of the incense offering specifically which has the 11 incense spices which actually completely nullifies the forces of the Kalipos and this is a protection uh, from every kind of injury and uh, every kind of illness and every kind of misfortune and a great segula we saw in last week's parasha what was it that Moshe told Aaron to do when people were dying in the uh, plague he said go there and burn the incense I had the privilege uh, two weeks ago when I was in uh, including my visit in Chicago uh, to meet two of the people who had been with the archaeologist uh, Wendell Jones uh, digging in Eretz Yisrael in the uh, Qumran area when they discovered uh, caves containing the residue of Keteris I read this story quite a number of years ago but to actually hear from the mouths of people who were there what happened when they discovered the Keteris and the experiences they had the experiences from uh, from uh, the little bit that was uh, burned by one Gentile the little bit that was tasted by one Gentile hearing this from their lips was a very big, big uh, excitement and I, I, I really pressed them on well, how did, you, how did they know when they described to me in detail the chemical 